Hello aspiring game developers and welcome back to another NDS programming tutorial. Last time I promised I'd be showing you guys how to get code, your NDS code built, built in code blocks. However, when I made that tutorial, it totally crashed. I ended up having to completely reinstall the DevKit Pro and, and at least now I have things building again. This is what it looks like. So instead of actually showing you guys how to do it right now, because honestly I don't want to go through any more trouble, what I am going to do is I am going to show you guys something awesome somebody did, which looks like this. This is, this is Roy De Janeiro. Um, he made this awesome tutorial that actually showed me how to get DevKit Pro up and running. The tutorial is very, very straightforward to follow. Um, he maps out just every little detail to it. Th most of this is just a complete one-time thing, so just follow the tutorial and see if you can get work get it working yourself if you if that is what you guys desire. Um, one thing I will make a note of is that on this instruction right here when it tells you to copy the examples hello world um, actually if you guys would want to save yourself some hassle um, just copy the template file we made back in the lesson two um, yeah just copy just copy that instead and use that as your template and then if you ever have an issue with Nitro Files, the Nitro Files folder not getting copied over when you create a new project in CodeBlox, um, either you can just create that folder, or what I like to do is, because I have that issue, what I'll do is I'll copy over the template to where I want to save it, and then when I create the, a new project using the template in CodeBlox, I just create it over where I copied the template. It'll replace most of the files, but a couple files, but it'll leave like the folders behind so that you'll still have that Nitro files and anything else you needed already there. So yeah, that is pretty much all the steps. Um, one thing you want to, you might want to make sure of is when you do the run to emulator. Make sure you have the make sure you put in the emulator that is working for you. I don't have the right emulator working for me in Coblox. It's not really a huge issue for me. I've just worked around that. I have not gotten the code level working level debugging working with Desmini. Um, I just cannot get it working. Um, I don't know why. It's just. I cannot get it working. Maybe you guys will have some more, some better luck, but I have not. Anyways, that is not the topic of today's tutorial, as you may see in the title of this video. The topic of this tutorial is going to be key input. So, if we want key input, we're going to, well, let's go this route. Key input on the NDS is actually a little bit tricky because you have to do it in a frame-by-frame -frame setup. So, not really the most practical when you're trying to do a text game that has a lot of waiting around. And trying to understand actually everything that is going on for a text point standpoint is just really, really annoying. And when we our organization started up and we were making Legend of Hellblade and a couple other text games, we ran into the same problem. So this was my solution. I made the I made these couple code files called key input and we are going to be dropping those into our project which should solve our issue. So if I go to source I drop these in there, and there, now they're in our project. Um, not sure why I didn't just copy, but oh well. So, now we got these key inputs into our project folder. Close out of that, minimize out of that. 
they're still not in our actual project. So we're going to add files. We're going to go to source, and we're going to add these two files into our project. And now they should be there in their respective organized folders. Thank you, CodeBlocks. That's what I love about CodeBlocks. So anyways, actually we need to go into keep input.h because I want to show you guys what this looks like. You have a bunch of defines right here. Um, don't ask me why the numbers don't go completely in order. I was playing around with stuff. But anyways, obviously you can see these represent the different keys. You can press K stands for key, and then you have A, B, X, Y, up, down, left, right. L, R, start, select, touch. Touch means just tapping on the touch screen anywhere. You do not need to memorize the numbers. They have absolutely no relevance. And then you have a bunch of key, get key functions, as well as these two functions up here. The init keyboard allows you to actually have a virtual keyboard pop up on the MBS, which is awesome. And the on key pressed, um, this is an internal function that basically tells the system to, well, it tells the keyboard system that when a key is pressed, it should display it on the screen, which is behavior you kind of want. So then we have the get key functions. Um, the standard get key will return the first key of all these keys listed. It'll return the first one to you. And all of these down here, which you may call, will return, will return the first of the keys you list back to you. So if, you only, if you're just waiting for like the A button to be pressed, you can just put in the A button right here, and it will not return and let the code continue until the A button is pressed. And this get key function right here, this is actually just a utility function that all of these use. I should really have named that like get key utility, but then again, this function actually uses the normal get key function. So you guys, I'll show you guys later how that all works when I actually show you how to do actual input when you're doing games that more like frame by frame based games. So let's put this into action. First we are going to make an inner a variable called t and then we are going to Say equal to e, and let's pass it key A and key B. So when it, so if either of those buttons are pressed, get key is going to return which one is pressed so that we can use it. So now let's check if key is going to be equal to a. All right, let's do that. There we go. And if it's key A that's going to be pressed, we are going to type it in fast like Sonic. Otherwise, slow like. Hmm. Hey Jack, who's slow? Sand Rakers. What is it? Sand Rakers. How do you spell that? I have not heard of that. S A N D R A C R A K E R S. If you guys know where that is from, let me know, because I do not. <laughs> you Jack for potentially expanding my knowledge on the world of video games. It is a video game, right? Yes. Okay. So anyways, now that we have that, oh, there's one more thing we need to do. Or two more things. 
we need to set it up so that the screen clears each time otherwise you'll just have text constantly showing up and we want to make sure though that after we display this it stays until the user is ready to move on again so we're just going to call get key just like that now if we build our project Always, always. I always forget this. There we go. And now that we have our project, we can go and run this. And if I press that, go like sand rakers press it again if I press that fast like Sonic so there we go so next thing to show you guys is how to actually use that keyboard that awesome awesome keyboard let's make a SDR buffer 30 And instead of this get key function right here, we're going to have the keyboard go for us. So we're going to place it in a string. And we're going to send that to str. And, oh, one more thing. We got to actually init the keyboard right away. So, make key E. There we go. So, now if we run this, fast like Sonic. Sonic. Obviously, this is kind of slow. Can you see why you do not want to use this keyboard very often in your games? Because this takes forever. But there you go. See, it's not, and then it disappears. Well, that's the keyboard for you, but obviously, it you really do not want to be using that very much you should really just be having choices and using buttons for input to kind of, because it's a lot easier for the player than to have to type everything in sorry if you were looking for a really cool like text game port onto the NDS that had a lot of typing just not gonna work for you unless you want to create all the options yourself, which could take a while. So, that pretty much you're pretty much set to make your own text-based game, which is the first and most important step in building a slideshow game. But there's one more thing I want to show you. I go in here and load this up this is a giant text game that I just built all in main it's like 1,300 lines or so yeah this is a giant mystery text game and one of the things that you want to make sure you are doing is there's only so many characters you can put on a line, and then it wraps. But it doesn't like wrap based off of spaces like your text editor, like your word processor would. Um, it will just, if you don't have those slash ends in the right spot, say if I didn't have that slash end right here, it could possibly print Y and E in on the top line, and then have A and a question mark be on the next line. It just keeps going. 
So basically you want to space out your lines, um, make sure that you, I mean, ah, what I'm trying to say here is there's 32 characters per line that you can have. So use that as a guide for planning out how many characters you can fit on a line. It's 32, and you can fit about 20 or so lines. If you print more than that, the NDS will actually scroll down to the last lines you print, but there is no way to scroll back up, which is why you don't want to print too many lines at once. Um, often you'll have a function like next or something, which will just be like press any key to continue. Just very similar to normal text schemes or basic coding in general if you're still learning C or C++. But anyways, um, that's pretty much what you what you guys need to know. You just got to be a little careful because formatting is not the most friendly on the NDS. Then again, the NDS was not built for text-based games or slideshow games. I mean, it, it fits a little bit more, but the NDS was built for a lot of 2D animation games, which we will be showing you way later in the future, but you got to start somewhere, and this is a great place to start. So, I may or may not actually link this game. It, it, up in the Dropbox, um, we'll just dec I'll decide that sometime. Um, it's a very very strange game that I made. So if you really really want to play it, I would should and I do decide to upload. I'm just gonna warn you right now, it is not a very usual text game at all. But anyways. I believe I say that anyways way too much. I just realized that. So guys, I believe that'll wrap up this tutorial. Next time, I think we will be going into Nightbox Library and getting your backgrounds up. But until then, keep making text games and just in general, keep making games, people.